Okay, so I will talk about error correction because the word coding theory might be a bit misleading. But yeah, we'll see. Yeah, uh, so, so let's say you are sitting here with your mobile phone and you want to send a nice picture to your friend in Amsterdam. For example, who is Uva is when we said free Amsterdam some some whatever some computer in Amsterdam, and this is how it looks like if you try to do it from Linux. Uh, <coughs> so just tracing the root of your packet. Just but here is just basically a simple packet. But maybe not everyone understands what's going on there. So here is how it like happens in on, in geographical perspective. So the packet from tar to first it goes from your phone it goes most probably to this white thing which is access point. From there, then it goes to the universal server. Then uh, I'm not sure exactly if the server is connected directly to Tallinn or maybe not. But anyway, soon it ends up in Tallinn. Then your packet is sent to Hamburg, most probably on the bed of the Baltic Sea. And then from Hamburg, somehow it goes to Frankfurt and Main. And then finally it goes to Amsterdam and then also a couple of points in Amsterdam, but it's local already. And of course, when you send a picture, like I you know, like in WhatsApp, you don't want to wait ages, and you want it to be sent very quickly. But you also want it to be sent without mistakes. So you want your friend receive on that side the same thing you've sent. <coughs> But the problem is that in every communication media, in the cable, in the air here, in whatever is satellite communication, whatever, there is always something which is called noise. Like we are known, we are used to know what noise is in real life, like just when you sit in the pub with a friend and talk, and there are a lot of people talking to you, the noise is just something which. <coughs> Uh, which makes your conversation a bit more difficult, uh, but a bit more passionate because you need to speak louder. Uh, but this, the same exactly effect happens in the, as I said, in cables or like in fiber optics, in basically anything when you transmit any data information. So, for example, let, who knows who is that? Uh, yes, it's Audrey Hepburn. Uh, so, what, for, let's say, for example, you want to send this picture. And let's say oh, that the total amount of errors from your phone here, because as you said, there are a lot of noise, from here with all this route to Amsterdam, let's say it's 15%, 10-15%, which is actually a very mild, mild uh, estimate. So, what you get after is something like this. If you don't do anything, you just send as it is. So, like, let's say, so here basically what I did, I just took 15% of the pixels on the picture, just make them white. So this is what you, not really fancy, right? I mean, like, maybe 50 years ago people would be really happy to get this in one second, even less, in Amsterdam, but not, not nowadays. <coughs> yeah, uh, so, uh, we'll not show the video because actually I managed to find, uh, because another type of data transmission is uh, writing data and reading data. And one of the examples is uh, compact disk. A bit uh, archaic now, but I found the reader, so we can sh have kind of a live presentation. Uh, so it was invented by the end of 80s, uh, usually mostly by Philips and Sony, Philips in Netherlands and Sony in Japan. Uh, yeah, so here every, all the data is encoded with the error correction techniques, which we will talk, which is the idea of this talk. But first, like demonstration. So <coughs> uh, in theory, if you damage, if you scratch the disk, it should still work fine. So uh, does it, yeah, thank you. So let's say like, like I feel like a magician. <laughs> uh, so we take the disk and like let's let's scratch it like. Uh, do you see it is scratched? Yeah, yeah. I hope it will play <laughs> after. So in theory it should play again after this. Uh, of course, if Windows allows it to play. If you can hear it. It's fine. <coughs> it's actually not original, than John. Uh, yeah, so I hope you were a bit impressed by this presentation, like live. Uh, yeah, so you've seen I scratched it quite severely. Uh, so the point is that <coughs> how it does happen, how 
so the idea is actually behind this the same. So in the first uh, in the first case, you kind of send your data, but here you also kind of send it, but you send it like you send it to a disk and then you read to disk. So you send it to yourself in some sense. You send it in time. Uh, yeah, but technique is the same. Error correction codes. So the idea is that by scratches or by noise, uh, which is basically the same idea from theoretical point of view, you introduce errors and error correction is just try to uh, to make no errors influencing what you get uh, but let's get a bit to theory part and how this magic happens so uh, let's say like take some toy example or toy channel let's say we work uh, with channel with erasures so basically when you send the message from here to there some abstract channel from point A to B the only type of errors which can happen is uh, erasures so like for example you send hello world and some uh, characters being erased uh, but since you're a human being and you know English you can't still you still can guess what was the message right because like because you can guess it most probably I hope uh, yeah but why is that so because actually we know that this is a natural human language and natural languages are very redundant so there are much more information there than you actually need to send this, this to, uh, for the message itself so like like for example no hello is written with double L if you write it with one L you still understand what's written there so there are a lot of errors you can tolerate as a human being but as a computer what usually you send is just zeros and ones and it's not a natural language so you have like general so let's assume we are, we are a computer so we don't know English so we don't understand what's there so we had already erasures. So what would you do if you, again, our example with real noise in the pub, so if you talk to a person and person didn't really get what you said, what do you do? Yeah, you just repeat, yeah. So actually, this is the very basic and the simplest idea how you uh, do erasures. But in this case, like in the theory, you don't want to send data back here, like so that the person from Amsterdam, in our example, sends you back message, oh, please repeat. You, so what you do, you send the message, uh, you repeat message twice already. So you send it from the very beginning message twice, or three times or whatever. So there are still errors can happen, but with highly likely this error will happen in the different positions. So when you put, like, compare two parts of the message, and you know they were originally the same, you compare the consecutive letters, like H, the first letter here is H, we know, this E, L and L is fine without any error correction, L, here is O, here is W, so basically comparing the first and second parts, you know for sure what is the message. There is a still slight chance that, for example, H, the first H, will be raised in both situations, in the like in the first part and the second part. But the probability of this becomes like, for example, if uh, the probability to raise H is 10%, then probability to raise H in both parts is only 1% already. So it's like basically squared probability. Or if the probability was 1%, then it becomes 1 over 10,000. <coughs> Yeah, so you compare these two messages and what you got, the original message. So this is very, like, uh, toy example, but basic, basically it shows the, uh, the main idea of all the error correction which happens. So the idea is just, you add some additional information which you don't really need, which is just redundant information, but because of that, because you have redundant information, when you are in Amsterdam, you don't need to send a message again. You just compare, like, you apply some algorithms, and you, because you send more than needed, you can tolerate errors. Is it clear? To some extent? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Yeah, so what is the modern challenge? Because actually this idea, is, this, this was called repetition code. It's very bad code, actually, because you need to send like messages twice longer than it's needed. So, for example, if you, it, it, there is a theorem, yeah, because it's theory, there is a theorem which proven if you have, for example, 30% of erasures in your channel, then you need to add only 30% longer messages. So, like, for example, if instead of sending 100 bits, you send 130 bits. And there is a code, there is a theory which you can tolerate all the errors. Uh, yeah, so what is the modern challenge? Who knows what this this on the picture? 
fiber optics? Yeah, it's fiber optics uh, on the sea bed, on the ocean's bed. Like, actually, I, ever, I really like this one. Uh, you know, it's Norway, and this is Svalbard. The, so I don't know how many, like, couple of thousand people living there. Uh, like, it's very cold there, and there is a huge line just going out just to them. Under the sea, I don't know, like, I think it's a couple of thousand kilometers. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, the idea is that uh, if you, and actually here, if you, like, the small green line is the cable which would get your message sent to Amsterdam. Uh, the, sorry, under the Baltic Sea. Uh, yeah, but the point is that most of the data now is sent via the fiber optics under the uh, ocean on the... Uh, ocean bed. And uh, the point is, the very good about fiber optics is it's very fast. It's very good. Like, for example, like if you Google a bit, just some random number, like current speed of fiber optics, one petabit per second, which is 10 to the 5, 15 per bits per second. Uh, so, like, I mean, like, these numbers are so astronomically high, you don't really grasp what is this. So, let's say 10 to the 15 bits is a game of thrones. All episodes, and in one second, and in Blu-ray, uh, 1080p quality, and sent 300 times. So this is 10 to the 5, 15, 15 bits, and fiber optics can send it in one second. So you can now you can kind of better grasp the how big is that. Yeah, so the problem is that you need to, as I said, like for example, even if you apply a very easy decoding algorithm, which was example of the repetition code, so for example, you say not Game of Thrones 300 times, but 150 times, and then you repeat. Then just to compare this amount of data, you need a lot of time. So for example, let's say, so this is one kilobit, which is 1024 bits, you know, bits, zeros and ones, yeah? Uh, so how fast we should de to the, the computer on the receiving side should be able to decode this? So let's say it decodes one kilobit, this amount of data, in 0 0.000001 second, so one over a million seconds. Then uh, to decode this, the stuff, it will take 12 days. And the data comes in one second. So next second, you will have 300 more se uh, like, not seasons, copies of all ga Game of Thrones episodes. So the, the modern challenge is you need to do something to decode extremely fast. Like and for that, there is actually very sophisticated algorithms. So for example, one of the simplest and used one is called load parity codes. So the idea is that you have bits, but you not just repeat as we said in our repetition code example. So you put the bits like in this manner, and then you have this structure called, called tunnel graph, and the idea is that the sum of incoming edges should be always even. So for example, for this it should be, we have two. Fine. For this we have one, zero, and this is erasure. But we know that the sum of them should be even. So this is one plus zero gives one plus something here, which is either zero or one. So to make it even, epsilon should be Yes, it should be one. <laughs> Someone is still following me. Uh, and the same is for here. So in fact, the algorithms are very highly mathematical. There are a lot of proofs and a lot of research. But I hope you got the, at least the main idea. So lessons learned from today. You cannot avoid noise in the whatever data you send. If you like, if you lost me somewhere in the beginning, like just back, get back on the ship and just read what's written here. So you cannot avoid no, avoid noise. It's just you know physics, the real world. Uh, but you can repeat, and it's just the basic idea of how we do. So you repeat the message, and uh, now you should be really fast. And that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nice presentation. And actually, we have three questions now to you. The first is, um, what yes. what this picture was from? Like, which movie it is from? Like this lady. I just googled Audrey Hepburn, and you know, it was the first one. Okay. I don't know maybe Breakfast at Tiffany's, most probably. Okay. If you don't know the movie with Audrey Hepburn, say Tiffany. Uh, Second question, what will happen if you scratch the CD from two sides? On two sides. Let's try. <laughs> Yo, by the way, uh, people are in the back. If 
you want, you can come to the front here and get a couple of five, maybe three spaces so you can have a seat if you wish. So I scratch it from two sides. Uh, let's see if anything happens. Yeah, it's your place. Okay. I think you need to scratch it quite a lot. Okay. So then it stops playing. Okay, nice one. Now the last one. And I lost it. Yeah, what is fiber optics made of? It's some plastic. <laughs> plastic. Nice answer. Thank you. <laughs> and we have one more question, actually. Uh, on which level of TCP IP stack this error coding happens? It's usually physical, though. On physical? Yeah, usually. Mm -hmm. Cool. Some more questions? Fiber optics are made of quartz silicon. I can't hear. Uh, they are made of quartz and silicon. Yeah, fiber optics is made of quartz and silicon. Nice note. Cool. Let's have a round of applause. Uh, now, one more thing I want to remind you.